Welcome to Hebrew Readers Church, everybody. We hope everybody's been having a wonderful week. And we hope everybody gets to enjoy the Shabbat day today. I'm your brother, Zachwa, and this is your brother, Kafafo. And we're Hebrew Readers Church. Once again, for anyone that's new, we greet you to the channel. Everybody else who continues to stick with us and our loving family and, and those who are our brothers and sisters in Yache Christ, we salute you again and we hope everybody's been doing well and blessed. We also hope that everybody's been doing the homework that we put out. Uh, we are going to have a new assignment. So, Ahaya Willing, we, um, I hope we've been prosperous for everybody and people can tell their testimonies of different things that's been happening to them throughout the course of the couple of weeks. And we're just glad to see you guys again. Without any further ado, Brother Costa, you got anything before we get going? No, just thank you all for your support. Silent man. <laughs> Silent and not many words today. All right. But we do have a great lesson for you guys. This is the part two of the two witnesses. We hope everybody was able to catch the edited version of the original part one. Uh, and this is the part two. So we hope everybody gets to enjoy it. Yes, yes, yes. All right, um, jumping back into it. I want to pick up at Testament of Levi, chapter 2, verse 8 and 11. In this second part, we're going to get further confirmation of who the two witnesses are and also get understanding of what shall come to pass concerning them in these end times. All right. All right. Pick up at Testament of Levi, chapter 2, verse 8 and 11. 8211, please. Right. And further I saw a second heaven, far brighter and more brilliant, for there was a boundless light also therein. And I said to the angel, Why is this so? And the angel said to me, Marvel not at this, for thou shalt see another heaven more brilliant and incomparable. The thing Levi were prophesied to do by the angel will come to pass in his posterity in the earth. Let's continue in verse 10. And when thou hast ascended thither, thou shalt stand near Ahia. Now, Levi, these things came to pass for Levi at that time. Here, where it says, thou shalt stand near Ahia, Moses stood near the Lord in Sinai, and he was spoken to as a friend. Can you read Exodus chapter 24, verse 2, please? And most of the alone shall come near Ahiah, but they shall not come nigh. Neither shall the people go up with him. So we see how Moses in the flesh fulfilled what Levi was to do when he ascended up into heavens. Continuing Testament of Levi chapter 2, verse 10. Let's see what else Levi would do when he ascended. And shall be his minister. Now, Levi's other son, Aaron, and his seed minister unto the Lord, along with the Levites who minister unto Aaron's seed. Can you read Exodus chapter 28, verse 1, and Numbers chapter 3, verse 6, please? And take thou unto thee Aaron thy brother, and his sons with him, from among the children of Israel, that they may be minister unto me in the priest's office, even Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, Eleazar, Itamar, Aaron's sons. Continue to Numbers 3 and 6. Okay. Bring the tribe of Levi near and present them before Aaron the priest that they may minister unto him. So hopefully you're seeing how what is happening in the heavens truly is manifested in the earth. Levi's seed stood near in Moses. Levi's seed also ministered in Aaron and his seed and the tribe of Levi. Continuing in Testament of Levi, chapter 2, verse 10, to see what else Levi went up to the heavens to do. And shall declare his mysteries to men. So Levi ascended to declare his mysteries to men. His seed also did it in the earth. The mysteries were declared by sons of Levi, like Moses, Jeremiah, Baruch, Ezra, and Ezekiel. These are major books concerning prophecies and mysteries to come. Continue in Testament of Levi, chapter 2, verse 10. And shall proclaim concerning him that shall redeem Israel. Now, this was interesting. Levi ascended to proclaim. 
Him that shall redeem Israel, John the Baptist of the seed of Levi, proclaim concerning the Lamb that should redeem Israel. When you read the New Testament, continue in Testament of Levi, chapter 2, verse 11. And by thee in Judah shall Ahia appear among men, saving every race of men. Lastly to come, a son of Levi and one of Judah's posterity shall be used to bring about the appearing of the Lord in these end times to save every race of man. This confirms what must come to pass in these end times, seeing what was shown to Levi that he would do when he ascended into the heavens. Now let's look at the events to come pertaining to the two witnesses. Can you read Revelation chapter 13, verse 2, verse 5, and verse 7, please? All right, Revelation chapter 13 and 2. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his feet and great authority. So what we're looking at, we're looking at what's coming to pass in these end times. In the last lesson on the floods that aired earlier this morning, you should have an understanding of what's coming to pass in the end times. This is going in to the 1274 days until the end. Continue in verse 5, please. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemy. And power was given unto him to continue 40 and 2 months. That's the 1,274 days. So here we have, this beast has his authority for 42 months. And during this 42 months, what is he giving power to do from the dragon? Can you read verse 7, please? And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. With his power... He will send the sinners of the Gentiles to destroy the children of Israel for the 42 months or the three and a half years, as we've discussed before. During the same time, what will be coming to pass here? Let's see in Revelations chapter 11, verse 2, please. But the court which is without the temple leave out and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall be tread underfoot 40 and two months. So the beast will be making war with the saints for the 42 months. And also the holy city will be tread by the Gentiles for 42 months. The 42 months is 1274 days. When these events commence, the two witnesses will be given power to preach for the initial 1260 days within the 1274 days. Can you read Revelations 11 verse 3, please? And I will give power unto my two witnesses. And they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days, clothed in sackcloth. These are the two whom Ahia told the church he will send for her help. Can you read Second Ezra, chapter two, verse seventeen to nineteen, please? Fear not, thou mother of the children, for I have chosen thee, saith the Lord. For thy help will I send my servants, Esau and Jeremy. After whose counsel I have sanctified and prepared for thee twelve trees laden with diverse fruits. And as many fountains flowing with milk and honey, and seven mighty mountains, whereupon there grow roses and lilies, whereby I will fill thy children with joy. Their prophesyings shall fill the children of the church, Hebrew and Gentile, with joy. And as verse 18 said, it was Esau and Jeremy. Esau and Jeremy are Greek versions of Isaiah and Jeremiah. These were two prophets from the tribe of Judah, speaking of Isaiah, and from the tribe of Levi, referring to Jeremiah, to help understand what tribes these two servants will come from. Their prophesying shall fill the children with joy. Can you go back to Revelation chapter 11, verse 4, please? These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before Elohim of the earth. They are the two anointed ones, as Zechariah chapter 4, verse 12 to 14 said, that pour their oil out of themselves. These are how the candles of the church are lit to help understand is what they're feeding the church is filling them with light and joy. 
Can you read Revelations 11, verse 5 to 7, please? And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth, and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. These have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, and have power over water to turn them to blood, and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. They'll be performing miracles again like the prophets and apostles. Continue verse 7. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them, and shall overcome them and kill them. As we had mentioned before, that beast is a literal, actual animal that's going to come out of the bottomless pit. It's going to come up out of the sea. And after they finish their prophesying, he's going to get his hands on them and kill the two witnesses. At some point after the 1260th day, the beast will turn his attention to war against the two witnesses and succeed in killing them. Let's see where they are going to get killed. Can you read Revelation chapter 11, verse 8, please? And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. So according to scripture, the two witnesses are going to die in America. That is pretty straightforward as what's going to come to pass. So we see that happen in these end times. Continue. Let's see what else will come to pass concerning them. Read in Revelations 9 to 11, please. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half, and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. It will be on the world stage that all shall see them dead three and a half days as a spectacle unto the world. Continue, please. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them, and make merry, and shall send gifts one to another. Because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. As you can see, it will be a cause for world celebration when these two prophets get killed. And this verse helps understand these are literally two men. It's not two whole tribes of Israel. Neither is it the nation of Israel and Judah. Nor is it any books like there's a doctrine that the two witnesses are the Bible and the Book of Mormon. According to scripture, that could not be so because it's two prophets, it's actual people. All right. So the whole world is going to celebrate their death. Let's continue to see what will happen after the three and a half days. All right. Revelation chapter 11, verse 11. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from Elohim entered into them. And they stood upon their feet and great fear fell upon them, which saw them. Now, this is going to be amazing. The same way the whole world is going to see them die. The whole world shall see them resurrected. They will be raised from the dead by the Spirit as witnesses that Christ rose from the dead. And all the world shall know the truth. The false prophet will be revealed in these times after the preaching, death, and resurrection of the two witnesses. I'm sorry. I said that wrong. I apologize. I did actually no. I said what I wanted to say. I apologize. Right, the false prophet is going to get revealed after the two witnesses have risen. Yes, thank you. I was going to feel like I said that wrong. Right. Let's continue to see after the two witnesses have risen, the false prophet getting revealed. Second Thessalonians chapter two, verse three to four, please. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called Elohim, or that is worship. So that he, as Elohim sitteth in the temple of Elohim, showing himself that he is Elohim. So this, when this son of perdition is revealed, he will be in Jerusalem, sitting in the temple of Elohim. He also was set his tabernacle in the glorious and holy mountain, Mount Zion. Can you read Daniel 11, verse 45, please? And he shall plant the tabernacles of his palace between the seas and the glorious holy mountain. Yet he shall come to his end 
and none shall help him. When he is revealed and established himself in a holy mountain, Zion, the children of Israel will have their trial before him. Can you read up? This is from the Apocalypse of Peter, chapter 2. This is a section out of it that we're going to read to get understanding of what is going to come when the false prophet is revealed. Please. Have thou not understood that the fig tree is the house of Israel? Verily I say unto thee, when the twigs thereof have sprouted forth in the last days, then shall faint Christ come and awake expectation, saying, I am the Christ that am now come into the world. Now he's going to awake expectation because you you have a huge beast coming out of the bottomless pit. The world is going crazy. Everyone is looking for a savior. And he's going to awake that expectation, lying, saying that he is the Christ that is now coming to the world. This is the false prophet that John saw after the time of the beast, 42 months. Can you read the Revelations, verse 13 and 11? And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb and spake at the dragon. In this time, after the 1274 days, the false prophet will continue his time until the 1331st day. Let's see how he will speak as a dragon. Can you read Ascension of Isaiah chapter 4 verse 6, please? And he will do everything he wishes in the world. He will act and speak like the beloved and will say, I am Lord, and before me there was no one. His deception will be to act and speak like Christ. Let's get more edification on what he will do. Ascension of Isaiah, chapter 4, verse 4 to 5, please. This angel Belier will come in the form of that king, and with him will come all the power of this world, and they will obey him in every wish. Notice it's the angel Belier that who it really is. It's the devil, but he's in the form of that king, which is the false prophet. Continue, please. By his word, he will cause the sun to rise by night, and the moon he will make to appear at the sixth hour. Notice the devil is going to have power over creation. This is the deception he's going to use. Can you continue Revelations 13 and 12, please? And he exercises all the power of the first beast before him. So he will continue destroying the children of Israel and speaking blasphemy against Elohim as the first beast had power to do. All right. Continuing. Um, this is Revelations. Continuing Revelations 13 and 12. And causeth the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. I just realized he's going to cause the earth to worship him. Mm -hmm. Wow. He really is going to have power over the creation. Right. Remember, Verse 13, uh, please. That's oh. why the, um, the son um, had got in trouble. Yes. He's in the sense of Isaiah tells he's going to get in trouble for what he did. Right. Yes. Yeah. And there's going to be a new earth. So the earth is going to get removed as well. So everything that defiled gets removed. Thank you. All right. Uh, Revelations 13 and 13, please. Mm -hmm. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. All right. Verse 14. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast, which had a wound by a sword and did live. All that deception, he's going to lead the world to make an image, make a graven image of the beast. Continue in verse 15 of Revelation 13, please. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. And the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. He will cause the graven image of that beast to have life. And those who won't worship it will get killed. So you can see how this is going to be. They're gonna, he's going to make it look like it's supernatural things. But this is his wickedness that he's going to perform in the end of the world. Continue 
to Ascension of Isaiah chapter 4, verse 7 and 8, please. And all men in the world will believe in him, and they will sacrifice to him, and will serve him, saying, This is Lord, and beside him there is no other. So you can see he's going to have power over the sun and the moon, power over the earth, power to cause graven images to speak and live. And he's going to speak and act like the beloved. These things are going to cause all men in the world to believe on him and serve him. Men will worship him and his image. Ascension of Isaiah chapter 4 verse 10 to 11. And the power of his miracles will be in every city and district. And he will set up his image before him in every city. So there we see, not only will he give that graven image life, he's also going to set up his image everywhere. So you see how something as simple as knowing we're not to make graven images, we're not to you know, make similitudes or likenesses by creating pictures of living creatures. And something as simple as knowing that commandment is something to let us know that that's the false prophet that doing that because that's not something Christ would do. Christ, the prophecy concerning Christ said his name will be in everywhere, not that image. So we can know from now, we see images being set up. That's not our ally. His miracles and deception will cause the world to turn aside and serve him. Even those who are waiting on Christ. Yache. Can you read Ascension of Isaiah chapter four, verse nine, please? And the majority of those who have associated together to receive the beloved, he will turn aside after him. How would he turn us aside after him if we're waiting on Christ to come? It's our own pleasure in unrighteousness and rejection of the love of the truth that will be used to tempt us to turn aside after him. Can you read 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 9 to 12, please? Even him whose coming is after the work of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, Allah shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. When Israel realizes their preference for unrighteousness, they will turn aside unto their unrighteousness and away from the true Christ. Can you read Apocalypse of Peter, chapter 2, this part, please? And when they, Israel, shall perceive the wickedness of their deeds, they shall turn away after them and deny him whom our fathers did praise, even the first Christ whom they crucified and therein sinned a great sin. Sadly, so when the people of Israel see the reality of their own evil deeds, they won't choose to change, but will go after their own deeds and deny Christ Yache to worship the false prophet. Continuing Apocalypse of Peter, chapter 2. But this deceiver is not the Christ. Thankfully, not all Israel believe on the false prophet. Because there will be those of Israel who receive the love of the truth. Continue, please. And when they reject him, he shall slay with the sword, and there shall be many martyrs. Then shall the twigs of the fig tree, that is the house of Israel, shoot forth. Many shall become martyrs at his hand. Enoch and Elias shall be sent to teach them that this is the deceiver, which must come into the world and do signs and wonders to deceive. Notice it's two men have to be there to teach them. That this is the deceiver which was coming to the world. The believers shall know that that son of perdition is the false prophet by the two witnesses who were raised from the dead, teaching them that he is the false prophet. Continue, please. And therefore shall they that die by his hand be martyrs, and shall be reckoned among the good and righteous martyrs who have pleased Allah in their life. After the, the resurrection of the two witnesses and the teaching of the people that the false Christ is the deceiver, they shall ascend to the heavens in a cloud 
just as Enoch and Elias did of old. Can you read Revelation chapter 11, verse 12, please? And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. Hopefully that helps understand why they were referred to in Apocalypse of Peter as Enoch and Elias, because they shall ascend even as Enoch and Elias did. Continue in Revelations chapter 11, verse 13, please. In the same hour was there a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell, and in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand, and the remnant were affrighted, and gave glory to the Elohim of heaven. After their ascension, there shall be an earthquake in the holy city Jerusalem, where the false prophet is. Continue, please, in Revelations 11 and 14. The second woe is past, and behold, the third woe cometh quickly. Notice this isn't the end of the world completely after these things have come. These are the things that must come to pass concerning the two witnesses. But the end would not be yet after all that has transpired. And as we know from the prior lesson, I think we discussed it in the remnant of Israel, when the two witnesses ascend, they're going back up to pray for the people to be a wall for the house, for the church and her children. And remember, you shall know the two witnesses or prophets by their fruits. Can you read Matthew chapter 7, verse 15? Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravens and wolves. So watch their fruits, not just the outward appearance. Now, we're going into a Shepherd of Hermas Mandate 11 to read through it so you can have scriptural edification on how to identify a true prophet so that you may have the tools necessary to know what you're looking for to ensure that you're following the right people. You can go ahead and read through it, Brother Zachwa, and feel free to jump in where you like. All right, the Shepherd of Hermas, Mandate 11, verse 1. He showed me men seated on the couch, and another man seated on a chair. And he saith to me, See if thou those that are seated on the couch? I see them, sir, say I. These, saith he, are faithful. But he that sitteth on the chair is a false prophet, who destroyeth the mind of the servants of Elohim. I mean of a doubtful-minded, not of the faithful. These doubtful-minded ones then come to him as a soothsayer and inquire of him what shall befall them. And he, the false prophet, having no power of divine spirit in himself, speaketh with them according to their inquiries and according to the lust of their wickedness and filleth their souls as they themselves wish. For being empty himself, he giveth empty answers to empty inquiries. For whatever inquiry may be made of him, he answereth according to the emptiness of the man. But he speaketh also some true words, for the devil filleth him with his own spirit. If so be, he shall be able to break down some of the righteous. That was very clear. He speaks according to what we want to hear. And some things will be true because it's the devil that's actually speaking. And the purpose of it all is that it will be able to break down some of the righteous. All right. I want to touch on this so people can actually understand this in modern day time. Um, Please. There's plenty of false prophets. And a lot of people look at false prophets like it has to be a man. There are false prophets that are women. And the doubtful minded are usually a lot of times we don't want to look at ourselves as doubtful minded. But when you start dealing in things like tarot readings and you start dealing in astrology, um, like zodiacs and stuff like that, you're actually going into a form of witchcraft. And it's the doubtful minded that seek those things because you don't want to be founded upon the good works of Elohim in the scriptures. And 
you feel like you're spiritual because you're dealing with those things, not understanding that there's good spiritual and there's bad spiritual. A lot of people have the connotation that because you're religious, you can't be spiritual. When you have to be spiritual to be religious. So just be careful with dealing with these things because tarot readers, all they're going to do, they're trying to tell you what you want to hear. And, and they have no spirit within them. They have, they want to be spiritual and they don't have it. They have no Holy Spirit. Right. And they might say a couple of things that are true. And that's because the devil gives them a couple of things just to sell you, just to deter you. So they might say a couple of things that are true. And then some, some things is like, uh, you know, I don't really know. But they said those couple of things that are true. And that's what sells you, you know. So yeah. you have to be very careful with those things because it is meant to deter the righteous. So we have to definitely put our faith in Alahayim and Alahayim alone and not go off into things that are, are not for us, that are actually for our demise. Yeah. So. You, you got Did you want to touch on? Um, thank you for sharing that because that's like really high end um, spiritual fornication. Then on the more covert level, you'll find it in the modern religions. The um, you have pastors, sheiks, and rabbis that, or or priests, or nuns that tell their congregation whatever they want to hear and it breaks them down and it causes a lot of people to lose faith being told things that don't come to pass and we already so, are dealing with that i mean look at the christian church everybody is, it, the christian church population used to be crazy now you see so many people walking away from the christian church and not even wanting to believe the bible at all because of the christian church so you can see how it's actually working. So, like, scriptures are true. All right, you ready to continue? Yes. I'm at um, verse four. Yes. So many, therefore, as are strong in the faith of Ahia, clothed with the truth. Cleave not to such spirits, but hold aloof from them. But as many that was important. Yeah. That, that was important because the devil it says in Thessalonians that it was for lack of love of the truth, people are going to be given a delusion. And is they're going to be given over and die because they did not receive the love of the truth. And then here we see those that are clothed with the truth will not cleave to such spirits. Hopefully this helps understand why it's so important to learn the truth of the gospel. And Christ said, I am the truth, the way, and the life. We have to learn of Christ, Yache. This, he is of all important to us to keep us from false prophets all together and the false prophet to come, brothers and sisters. All right. But as many as are doubters and frequently change their minds, Practice soothsayings like the Gentiles. That's what Zachwa just spoke about. The tarot card reading and things of that nature. We have to be a full purpose of mind to attain unto the truth. Not wishy-washy, not tossed to and fro, as the scriptures say. Stick to the journey, stick to the process, and keep fighting to get to the truth. Don't change your mind to turn back. Got to be faithful. Yes. And bring upon themselves so, greater sin by their idolatries. So we see what that doubtful mind gets us. The doubt to dabble into other things or hearken to these false prophets, it actually brings upon greater sin by our idolatry because we're seeking from other Alahayams, not our Alahayam, Christ Yache and his father. Ahaya, Alahayim. Continue, please. For he that consulteth a false prophet on any matter is an idolater, and emptied of the truth and senseless. 
that right there lets us know there's not even anything to play around about to go find out what a soothsayer or a idolater has to say. This is why you may find, we, like on YouTube, there's tons of teachers, and Paul mentioned how people have itching ears and being given to want to listen to all types of folks. But consulting a false prophet on any matter is idolatry. So be diligent, find the truth, pray the Lord reveal to you where it's coming from, who the two prophets are, and stay there and get the edification unto Christ so that you don't be caught up in idolatry. So it's not a light thing to just be having a whole bunch of teachers and following a whole bunch of people. All right. A whole bunch of ideology. Because Paul said, thank you for mentioning that, Zachwa, because the ideologies are um, doctrines of devils. Paul said that in the end times, it will be, be seducing spirits and doctrine the devils in the book of Timothy that will be leading us astray. Continue when you're ready. I'm in verse 5. Okay. But no spirit given of Elohim needeth to be consulted. But having the power of deity speak of all things of itself, because it is from above, even from the power of the divine spirit. But the spirit which is consulted and speaketh according to the desires of men is earthly and fickle, having no power, and it speaketh not at all unless it be consulted. So that's another way to spot a false prophet. Uh, a true prophet speaketh of divinity. So you might not even ask them anything, and they'll come to you and tell you. Whereas a false prophet, you have to come to them for them to tell you. And you have to consult with them and tell them what's going on. And then they're going to speak on it. Yeah, you have evidence of that with Saul. He went to the woman to do divination for him. As opposed to David, when Gad the seer came to him straightly. The Lord had told him, go tell my servant David such and such. And Gad went and told him without him even knowing David personally. Right. Thank you. No, I'm in verse 7. How then, sir, say I, shall a man know who of them is a prophet and who is a false prophet? Here saith he concerning both the prophets. And as I shall tell thee, so shalt thou test the prophet and the false prophet. By his life, test the man that hath the divine spirit. In the first That's place. King. Right. He's about to tell you. In the first place, he that hath the divine spirit, which is from above, is gentle and tranquil and humble minded, and abstaineth from all wickedness and vain desire of this present world and holdeth himself inferior to all men, and giveth no answer to any man when inquired of, nor speaketh in solitude. For neither doeth the Holy Spirit speak when a man wishes her to speak, but the man speaketh then when Allah wisheth him to speak. When then the man who hath the divine spirit cometh into an assembly of righteous men, who have faith in the divine spirit, an intercession is made to Allah by the gathering of those men. Then the angel of the prophetic spirit who is attached to him filleth the man, and the man being filled with the Holy Spirit speaketh to the multitude according as Ahiah willeth. In this way, then the spirit of the deity shall be manifest. This is then the greatness of the power as touching the spirit of the deity of Ahiah. So there we have how you identify a true prophet. So you can keep that in mind and you can return to the Shepherd of Hermas Mandate 11 for this edification to keep in mind for yourself. Try the person by their life. That's what Christ said in Matthew 7 and 15. Come as sheep, but inside they're raven and wolves. 
That's why you have to watch how they live, how they operate. Are they walking in the fruits? Because their lifestyle is what is going to show you who they truly are. All right? Continue. Let's hear now the rest of the edification from the angel of repentance. Verse 11. Hear right. now, saith he, concerning the earthly and vain spirit, which have no power, but is foolish. In the first place, that man who seemeth to have a spirit exalteth himself, and desireth to have a chief place, and straightway he is impudent, and shameless, and talkative, and conversant, in many luxuries, and in many other deceits, and receiveth money for his prophesying. And if he receive not, he prophesieth not. Now can a divine spirit receive money and prophesy? Is it not possible for a prophet of Allah to do this? But the spirit of such prophets is earthly. In the next place, it never approacheth an assembly of righteous men, but avoideth them, and cleaveth to the doubtful minded and empty, and prophesieth to them in corners, and deceiveth them, speaking all things in emptiness to gratify their desires. For they who are empty, whom it answereth. For the empty vessel so, placed together with the empty is not broken, but they agree one with another. So you see the false prophet, he sticks around people that are empty as he is and doubtful minded that he may continue to have that dominion over them, to have that glory to exalt himself over them. And he tells them what he tells them in their own corners and to keep away from the righteous continue please but when he comes into an assembly full of righteous men who have a spirit of deity and intercession is made from them this man is empty and the earthly spirit fleeth from him in fear and that man is struck dumb and is altogether broken in pieces being unable to utter a word i have given thee the life of both kinds of prophets Therefore, test by his light and his works the man who says that he is moved by the Spirit. Hopefully, our edification helps. Try a man by his life. It's by the way a person's lifestyle and their deeds are that tells if they are true prophets or not. Continue, verse 17, please. But do thou trust the Spirit that cometh from Elohim and hath power? But in the earthly and empty spirit, but no trust at all. But in it, there is no power for it coming from the devil. Thank you. So put no trust in that earthly spirit. Let's avoid false prophets altogether. And let's pay attention to know them by their fruits to see if they are of Christ our Lord. Hopefully this edification helps understand the two witnesses and what's coming to pass in the end. I found it interesting that with the false prophet you have, he's going to be controlling the earth, controlling creation, controlling the sun and the moon, causing people to make graven images, setting up his images in every city, his pictures everywhere, and talking like the beloved. But as you see, his acts are going to be unrighteous, yet he's going to cause the world to believe on him. But then on the right-hand side, Christ is going to also show his signs for his children to believe. He's going to have the two witnesses preach the true gospel. He's going to have them die and resurrect by the spirit and then testify of the false prophet. So you can see how the word of Allah is still going to give the signs that are needed for the believers to believe while the signs that the world will trust in are going to be there as well for them to believe in a false prophet. So hopefully it helps see the two sides of what's going to be coming to pass in the end times. Anything else, Zach? Well, I thought it's pretty good. Thanks a lot. Oh, as you saw also, it's the children of Israel. It's at the hands of the false prophet. They have to die to be good and righteous martyrs. This is why, Israelites, we want to make it to that time. Because if we die before that, the scripture does not say we'll be good and righteous martyrs. 
We need to make it to that time of that false prophet so that we may be counted among the righteous. All right. And, um, everybody, we hope. Thank you all. Oh, sorry. Tom. We hope That's everybody it. got the That's homework. Please, if you have any testimonies, please write them in the chat. Write them to our email, hebrewreads at gmail.com. We are going to be putting out the next homework assignment. So it should, we're probably going to do it probably next Shabbat today. And um, we hope everybody has just been well. We hope everybody enjoyed the lesson. Please send us any questions that you may have. Uh, Costa, you want to check the chat real quick and make sure we don't have any questions before we get off? Sure. One moment. Okay. Thank you. Oh, do you guys use your phone? No, I don't. I have my other phone not with oh. me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Deborah Abundance, Chabata Chalam. Hello, sister. Hello, sister. Hanu. Hanu Ruvenin, Shabbatha Chalam to all in Yate. Ah, is good. Shabbatha Chalam. He's a, Hanu has a question. What will happen to believing Gentiles who might get caught in that time? Do they, will they be delivered also to the false prophet to be martyred? Do you know anything concerning that, Zachwa? Uh, scripturally, I think the scripture that we read was referring to Israel, but I'm, yes. I'm pretty sure that there's going to be martyrs amongst the Gentiles as well, because there was a multitude of them and then they're, they're not all going to make it to the end. It's plausible. Right. I also confirmed that I don't know any scripture that literally mentions the Gentiles being martyred at the false prophet's hand. So cannot scripturally say so, but Lord willing, there'd be some edification given on that, and we'll see what happens with that. Well, we know it's not going to be a multitude oh. of Gentiles that's going to, uh, a multitude of Gentiles that's going to make it into the end of coming to Christ. So some of them have to die, and that's just a speculation. So there's nothing that we can confirm scripturally on that. We do know that if a Gentile, any person, believes in Christ Yache, bears the fruits of the Spirit and keep the commandments, they're going to be with him in his kingdom. So hopefully that will suffice for knowing that salvation is in Christ for the Gentiles too. All right. Brother Chinedu Chalam. We got Chinedu there. <laughs> we have a sister... Nettie Jenkins. Hello, sister. You're welcome. She says, thank you. Chabata Chalam. Got a typo there. It said Chabata Chapman. We understand. We understand. <laughs> right. Text get us all the time. We got Makala. Grace and peace, my brothers. Yeah, right. Uh, peace be with you, Makala. Uh, we thank you all for your support, and we hope this lesson was edifying today. And um, any other questions and such, feel free to write them, whether in a chat, comment, or email us. Um, thank you all for your support. Glad to finally get these lessons out so there'll be a solid understanding of the end times. Um, Lord willing, next we'll get to understanding the day and um, the day times and finishing up on that understanding the calendar and we move forward from there. I think that's it for now. Everybody enjoy the rest of your Shabbat days. Uh, everyone who is getting close to it being sh the Shabbat being over, we hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we thank you all for your support. We greatly much appreciate it, and we hope everybody just continues to strive for the fruits of the Spirit and to to have faith, faith in Elohim and His law. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Shout out to tell them, everybody. HRC, 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 HRC,